One of the greatest internet mysteries is the real reason that Guy Bean, aka Dr. Disrespect, was banned by Twitch. Today, we are going to discuss all of the major theories on why the Purple Snakes irreparably ruined its reputation by permanently banning the two time. After I discuss the theories, I'll give you my take on why he was cancelled. In 2019, Microsoft's Twitch clone, Mixer, signed iconic Twitch streamers Ninja and Shroud to massive exclusive streaming contracts. Mixer probably offered Dr. Disrespect and other big Twitch streamers similar large deals. Logically, Doc probably used a Mixer deal as leverage to renegotiate a sizable 18 to 24 month deal with Twitch. Doc's Twitch deal was announced on March 12, 2020. On Monday, June 22, 2020, Mixer announced that it was shutting down. Doc's last Twitch stream was on Thursday, June 25. On Friday, June 26, 2020, it was first reported that Twitch banned Dr. Disrespect. Later, the world was shocked to learn the ban was permanent. By all accounts, Doc has made a very successful transition to YouTube gaming. Because of his leadership, YouTube gaming is gaining market share from Twitch. Initially, Dr. Disrespect stated he didn't know the specific reason for the ban. Months later on August 24, 2021, he stated that he discovered the reason for the ban and politely announced that he was suing Twitch. You, man. It's been extremely disheartening. It's been it's been a roller coaster of emotion, and it's absolutely fucking sucks. And to, to and to end off my little discussion here, but a lot of people ask me, do, do you know the reason? Well, yeah, I do know the reason why now. I've known for months now the reason why. And I'll just say this right now, champs. There's a reason why we're suing the f out of them. Okay. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. On March 10th, 2022, he announced that he resolved his legal dispute with Twitch, although he still remains banned by the Twitch platform to this day. The officially official public reason that Twitch banned Dr. Disrespect was due to a violation of community guidelines or Twitch's terms of service, which you can find on Twitch's website. To this day, Twitch has not publicly stated the specific reason for the ban, nor has Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Disrespect may have told other big streamers the reason for the ban, which could be why many big Twitch streamers have left for YouTube in recent months. Why else do you think XQC has a huge portrait of Dr. Disrespect prominently displayed behind him on most streams? He may know the reason for the ban and could be showing who he supports. After reading the Twitch community guidelines in terms of service, my key takeaway is that they cover a lot of behaviors and are written in an ambiguous and subjective way, which could make even seemingly mild violations grounds for a ban. Also, Twitch has been known to apply its rules unevenly. In my non-legal view, this could make them more easily challengeable in a dispute. Twitch banned Dr. Disrespect four days after Mixer announced it was shutting down. Under one theory, Twitch saw this as an opportunity to renegotiate its contract with Doc since Doc could no longer use Mixer as leverage. Twitch wouldn't outright state it wanted to lower the price on Doc's contract. Instead, what they would do is temporarily ban him for some fluff reason and announce they were having a meeting to decide on whether to make the ban permanent. They would then hope that Doc would offer to quote-unquote voluntarily lower his existing contract price. This sounds like dirty tricks but is well within the norms of hardball negotiating tactics. Under this theory, one of the reasons that Twitch makes up absurd rules like banning words like virgin and simp is that it wants to use violations of these rules by its streamers as negotiating leverage against them. If Twitch states it's going to ban streamers for calling people virgins, it could also justify banning streamers for making other similar comments without explicitly stating which behavior is considered a violation. Twitch might be able to use these community guideline and TOS violations as a mechanism to get out of contracts with streamers if they turn out to be money losing. The main problem with the renegotiation theory is that Doc's Twitch contract was only for 18 to 24 months, according to media reports. So, within 24 months, Twitch could renegotiate the contract and take into account Mixer's shutdown and whether Doc underperformed the prior contract. A related theory is that Twitch banned Doc for lying about the contract Mixer offered him. According to this theory, 
Doc bluffed his Mixer contract size, and when Mixer shut down, Twitch determined that he was probably lying and banned him for bad faith negotiations. I personally don't put much stock in this theory, because Doc would have known that the exact Mixer contract terms he was offered are discoverable in a civil lawsuit. In May 2020, Kotaku and Game Rant reported that on his Twitch stream, Doc expressed support for Elon Musk who was anti-COVID lockdowns and a The Hill opinion piece that appeared to argue for the end of COVID lockdowns. In the last 10 minutes of Doc's last Twitch stream, he plugged a book and Amazon Prime video by David Icke multiple times. Let's watch those moments. I was watching that doc documentary on, uh, what's this guy? Uh, Ike, Ike. I-C-K-E, older gentleman. Anybody know who I'm talking about? I forgot his first name. David Ike, yes, Alex, yes. I like him. Even if like, it's, it's like, it just kind of, you know, rather than this, it's on Netflix. I believe it's on Netflix or is it Amazon? It's one of the two. It's either Amazon or Netflix. Little documentary on him. It's pretty enlightening. All it allows you to do is just sort of like, you know, allows you to step outside of the box just a little bit. Whether some of the stuff is not true or not, whatever. I think the whole the whole goal though is to wake up. I actually bought the, uh, Mrs. Assassin bought the book. Actually, not me. I shouldn't take the credit. Cause she's staring at me right now with a blade saying, uh, uh I did. Bought his book too. Things like this thick. I'm going to read it though. Tomorrow, will you be playing, uh, no. David Icke? I'll be no, bad. No. I ordered his book too. No, yeah, I want to read it. No, bad. Oh, the backyard, uh, the backyard. Oh, okay. Okay, who's it? I appreciate everyone watching today. Who's it in the backyard? Who is going to be looking? We'll, we'll get through. We'll get through this Champions Club. Uh, it's, yeah, I know it's a tough. Because I don't know this one well. Life's weird right now. I. Oh my god! We'll, we'll get through this, okay? And. Uh, hey, Christopher. Dun dun dun! You better not taunt me. These were the last comments Dr. Disrespect made on Twitch before his ban, so it is natural to assume these comments factored into his ban. He was banned the day after making these comments. The video mentioned was likely, Renegade, the life story of David Icke. A bootleg version is available on YouTube. The book was probably, everything you wanted to know but were never told, which appears to be about how institutions in society like the media brainwash people in order to control them. The video is not about COVID-19 since it was published before 2020. However, the book could be related to COVID-19, indirectly. In May 2020, David Icke was banned from Facebook for comments he made about COVID-19, which were deemed to be misinformation. In November 2020, David Icke was banned on Twitter for supposed COVID misinformation. So, while Doc didn't directly support Icke's COVID ideas on stream, Ick was becoming more famous at this time for his views on COVID and Dr. Disrespect was supporting the author, in general. There aren't a lot of examples of Twitch streamers being banned for COVID. In March 2020, Twitch streamer Caseytron was banned for her COVID comments. On Twitch, she joked that she wanted to spread COVID-19 to kill poor and old people. It's a bad analogy with Doc because it was a joke and she was only banned for about 10 days. Back in 2020, when I heard this theory that Doc was banned for COVID skepticism, I thought it had zero credibility. In 2022, there was the Twitter document dumped by Elon Musk, which revealed that Democrat politicians and the FBI in effect ordered social media personalities to be shadow banned or deplatformed for being skeptical of COVID lockdowns or vaccines, or for other reasons. FYI, 
according to legal experts, that is probably unconstitutional. I now think Twitch executives might have been very annoyed by Doc's comments and that annoyance could have triggered his ban, but on an unofficial basis. Doc also largely used proxies to express his skepticism of COVID lockdowns instead of really doing it directly, which would make it more difficult to ban him explicitly for his COVID views. So, if Twitch wanted to ban him for COVID views, they would have to blame a different reason. David Icke's list of conspiracy theories is quite long, so perhaps more than one of them triggered an emotional reaction in Twitch management. For example, according to Wikipedia, Icke's book The Trigger, which was published in 2019, explores a conspiracy theory that the Israeli government and Zionists helped cause the September 11th terror attacks. In the month in which he was banned, Dr. Disrespect stated he was going to give all of his Twitch donations to police reform organizations. A lot of his viewers probably thought he was giving the money to the Black Lives Matters organization, but Doc did not explicitly promote BLM on his channel. As a side note, BLM may have misused its funds and scammed people out of millions of dollars according to NBC News. Smartly, Doc probably didn't give this money raised to BLM but this could be the reason he was banned. Instead of giving the money to BLM, Doc stated he was giving the money to a wide range of police reform organizations. He specifically mentions the Center for Policing Equity and the Equal Justice Initiative. It is not clear which other organizations he was planning to give money and how much he was allocating to each one. Under one theory, Twitch determined that Doc misled his viewers on where the money was being donated and decided to ban him. Doc stoked this conspiracy theory himself after he moved to YouTube in this clip. The family, Kevin. Same to you. I wish I could donate to you guys. Doc, you do, why don't you do some charity or something? Well, shit, I mean... Last time we, last time we did a charity, we raised $80,000 and then got banned. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of want to stay away from charities for, for a while. However, if Twitch didn't like the charities, Doc could have changed them. Even after donating the money, Doc would have been able to donate additional money to other charities if that would have resolved the issue with Twitch. The two organizations Doc mentions appear to be legitimate and concerned with police reform with regards to black communities. The charity drive was for the full month of June and Doc was banned on June 26th, so the charity drive wasn't even done yet. The list of charities was probably not even finalized yet by June 26th. But, if BLM wasn't one of the reasons he was banned then why did Doc voluntarily offer up the charity initiatives as one of the potential reasons? My take is that Doc was probably officially banned for some sort of quote-unquote toxic behavior and Doc was not able to use this charity drive to help counteract that supposedly toxic behavior. His comments on YouTube after the ban may have been meant to express annoyance over that. Around the time Doc was banned, streamers were being threatened by DMCA violations for playing copyrighted music. At the time, Twitch was taking a harder stance on these violations. As such, a theory was that he was banned for DMCA violations. However, Dr. Disrespect tends not to play copyrighted music. Reports of DMCA violations are also not highly confidential secrets. We would know if he was banned for DMCA violations by now. There are also mechanisms for resolving DMCA issues like paying the copyright holders. With that being said, it's a lot easier to receive a DMCA strike than people think. Beside COVID, BLM, and DMCA, Another tripwire laid down for streamers in 2020 was hashtag MeToo. Out of all of the theories for the ban, this was probably the most prominent one in the mainstream news media. It was a sensitive time for hashtag MeToo allegations due to the 2020 election. Also, Doc has a history of being unfaithful toward his wife. Although, his wife stayed with him during that rough patch in 2017 and has stayed with him after his ban in 2020. At this time in 2020, other Twitch streamers were being cancelled and deplatformed due to hashtag MeToo allegations. According to the theory, 
some women may have contacted Twitch with hashtag MeToo allegations and Twitch may have believed women. It's not possible for me to support or debunk this allegation since none of this information has to ever come out and become public, even if true. Given that there has not been a hint or whisper of hashtag MeToo surrounding Doc before or after being banned by Twitch, in hindsight I'm giving this a low probability of being the reason for the ban. One of the most frequent types of serious Twitch investigations is with regard to bot viewership, which content creators can purchase to artificially increase their viewership. This can increase ad revenue and place them higher up in the sort order for a game channel. This could be a reason for Doc's ban, but it's probably a stretch. In the following clip, it's not clear whether XQC thinks viewbotting could be the reason for Doc's ban or whether he is making fun of that possible reason. Guys, it's guys, 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 this is live stream fails. There are only two options here, guys. Guys, two options. Last stream of Sexual assault, boys, or view botting. There's no way that nobody could possibly Just sit home and watch the doc unironically. I'm side. telling you guys, it's view botting. It was a complete shit show. The third movie was here is a recent article in which a popular streamer accuses most top Twitch streamers of view botting. I wouldn't take his statement as literal. His message is that viewbotting is a lot more common than people think. In the past, Doc has been known to make comments that could be interpreted as being insensitive toward Asians. In my view, any streamer who makes similar comments could be banned by Twitch even if such comments were known by Twitch at the time of contract execution. It's well known that Doc's daughter could be as high as 25% Asian, so it's highly unlikely Doc is biased against Asians. I'm 99.99% .99 confident that Twitch used these clips as an excuse to help justify cancelling his contract even though Doc has not performed his Chinese caricature voice for many years and these clips were known by Twitch at the time of contract signing. Doc's persona is like a world wrestling entertainment villain. He's like a deadly assassin or private military contractor type. People assume it's all just an act, but maybe it isn't. Maybe the act is Guy Beam and Dr. Disrespect is his true self. Did Twitch find out this shocking secret? Likely not. Any nefarious activity would have been leaked to the press over the last two years. There was a so-called journalist who famously may have alluded to such a reason in this Twitter comment but nothing has come of it since. Back in 2020, I firmly believed the most likely reason for the ban was that Twitch management didn't like Doc for office politics reasons and therefore wanted to renegotiate his contract after Mixer closed down. Twitch could use the extra money to sign Ninja and Shroud, who were coming off Mixer. After observing Twitch's erratic behavior over the last two years, I don't think economics, or any rational reason, can be the real cause for Doc's ban. The reason for the ban was probably irrational in nature. Therefore, the reason for the ban was probably due to politics. I now think Twitch may have banned him because they didn't like that they were paying a lot of money to a person with opposing views on politics and COVID, as illustrated by his support of Elon Musk and David Ick. They may have wanted to destroy his influence because they couldn't control him. Twitch wouldn't have been able to blame the cancellation on political views or COVID views officially because Doc largely used proxies to express those views and the idea of cancelling someone for that reason was too novel at the time. Instead, Twitch may have constructed a long list of supposed violations of the vague community guidelines and TOS to justify the ban. Like half of Twitch streamers may technically be in violation of the vague and subjective guidelines and TOS, in my opinion. That's my analysis. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And you think I'm gonna stop right there? You think that's the end of the line? You think we're done? Did we put the locks on the arena? Champions Club. <laughs> We're just getting started.